Welcome to the printed case training. We'll be going over today how to use our PAC cutter with our inkjet Epson printer. We'll be making custom cases and showing you how to do a start from finish. Let's start. To our left, we have our Windows 10 tablet. This is the tablet that we call our hub. You can design, print, and cut from everything off of this tablet. It also works as the hub to where you can link other tablets, computers, or phones so that you can have multiple users at once. This tablet runs into the cutter, which is our PAC cutter, and this machine is what does all the cutting, whether you're doing custom cases, glitters, rhinestones, whatever products we offer, this is the machine that runs everything through it. To the right, we have a standard inkjet printer. This is just an Epson four color inkjet printer. We have, you have different levels you can choose of printers depending on the quality and the quantity you want to be able to print. Let's get started to show you the first steps in making custom cases. So the first step is the design phase. What we'll do here is we'll want to open up our printed case software. Once you open the printed case program, you'll see the layout and the options you have. The first option that you'll want to select is going to be our manufacturer. When you click this box, you'll see a drop down. This will include all the manufacturers that we carry. For obvious reasons, we have our Apple, Samsung, we have our LG's, HTC's, those will be all your phones. We also do pop sockets, portable chargers, and other accessories that you can customize. After, for today's purpose, we'll be doing just an Apple phone, so I will select Apple. For our model, our next step will be to select this box, and as you can see, you get another drop-down uh, box that will show you all the models offered. All the iPhones, iTouches, uh, are included in this so today we'll be doing an iPhone 7. After you select the model you would like you will get a template type. These template types are uh, different variations. The first types of templates that you can do is you can do a skin directly to a phone. This would be a back and if you click on the template type over to the right the template will pop up and this will show you exactly what what it looks like and how to uh, cut out. We have variations. If you click back to, you'll see that the, the, you can choose, depending on what the customer wants, a different type of template type. For today's purpose, we'll be doing a TPU case. Talk to your uh, sales rep to see what cases you'll be ordering, and that will be in your drop down list. But most likely, 90% of the time, you'll be doing an HSTPU case. After you've selected your manufacturer, your model, and what you'll be uh, what template you'll be using or what case you'll be using we're gonna go choose our picture when you click choose picture this is gonna be the picture that you've downloaded off the internet or a customer has emailed you and I will go through and find a sample photo select our folder you'll find the image you want to use select this image for right now you'll click open and now you'll see a little preview of the image our next step is you want to click our design and print picture the window that comes up now is the print a case designer this is the window that you'll be using all of your uh, tools to resize um, and move the photo to the correct position that the customer wants for their phone case. So if you look over to the left, you'll see a couple of different buttons over here. Um, on brightness, saturation, contrast, you normally will not have to adjust this. Most phones nowadays, uh, smartphones, take really good pictures 
uh, that are already pre-adjusted and you won't really necessarily need to ever use these so I would skip over these controls um, the next ones you want to look at that are important are our locked aspect ratio uh, this is going to keep the pitcher from widening too wide or or uh, stretching to make the photo look uh, not not normal or not in aspect ratios. I always like clicking this. You can always unclick it. If you click it, the box um, will turn green. That means it's on. And when you adjust the photo, uh, it keeps the photo uh, resizes it smaller or bigger, but keeps it all aspect ratios in line. So we'll go over that. We'll show you a demo in a second. Uh, rotate clockwise. Um, or rotate counter that's just to flip the count uh, the, the photo uh, left or right or rotate it left or right but for right now I'm gonna go into uh, I'm gonna skip over and what I normally do is I click an auto resize as you can see here the photo is a really high resolution big photo so it's really stretched big so what I'll want to do for this first uh, step is click auto resize when you click that as you see it makes the f uh, photos more uh, it makes it smaller so this is gonna you'll be able to see it and adjust it easier than than si clicking a button to size it down uh, multiple times so after you've re uh, auto resized it you can just put your mouse over the photo and hold down the left mouse button and now you can move it and you can move it and adjust it to where you want to put it on the the template the template as you can see is this black line here this is what the back of the phone case you'll use this uh, to center the photo and fill it completely up to look 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 right so now that we have our lock aspect ratios you'll see buttons on the bottom and the right these buttons if you click it as you can see the photo gets bigger and this is with the aspect ratio locked. If I unlock that uh, aspect ratio, as you can see as I click it, it shrinks it or stretches it. This is for the vertical buttons. For horizontal, if you click this, as you can see, um, it makes it... I'm um, sorry, these are the vertical buttons on the right, the horizontal on the bottom. This makes it large, uh, stretches it larger shrinks it so for this photo we're just going to lock our aspect ratios and as you see it keeps the photo from stretching out of proportion so now I'm going to just click this button a couple times to get the photo big and again left click move onto the template make it a little bigger and this is just customer preference you'll just do this you will adjust the photo and the customer can let you know or if you're making designs for yourself uh, you'll just get it to how it looks proper. So as I see here, as I have the to the couple here centered in the phone, this looks really good to me. A couple notes you want to make. If you look on the bottom of the phone case, you never really want to have the photo right on the line. Just to give you a little air margin here, just in case the printer prints a little high or a little low, you want to just give it a little buffer room. So that's like a quarter inch I like to give it. Uh, so whatever photo you're using, as long as you the top, the bottom, the sides, have it so that it's a, over a quarter inch. You see the left and right, we're fine. The top, we're good. We have about a about a quarter inch as well. Um, and you see the photo centered. The couple look real good right there. This would be a really nice phone case to make. <clears throat> so what we'll do? So what we've done now is we've we've adjusted uh, the photo. This we've resized it. We've moved it into place, and that's it. That's pretty much how simple it is. Uh, there's a couple other little buttons uh, that you don't really need to use actually. Uh, the reset button is going to reset the photo to the original when you originally loaded it. Uh, you don't really necessarily need to, uh, use that um, unless you maybe stretch it too big. But really that's about complete. Now we're going to go into printing and applying this photo. So after you've adjusted it, the next, last, the next step, not the last step, but the next step is you'll want to print. After you click print, a box will come up, a dialog box. From here, you'll want to adjust, I mean not adjust, select your inkjet printer. So I'll click my drop-down box, and whatever inkjet printer you're using, I'm using an Epson R2000, so I'll select that. 
we'll go into properties some printers you we can set up all these properties um, and you'll just click print some of them you have to go in every time and and select what what you're doing here I'll show you what I'm talking about that on media type you always want to use a premium photo paper glossy or a photo paper glossy or paper glossy uh, just just a, pr a photo paper that's what we're gonna be using. that's the type of material we're using um, after you've selected the media type you'll want to select um, the size and the size is a 5 by 8 you may need to do a user to find and add this manually but the size is a 5 by 8 premium photo glossy those are the two options you only have to to uh, select again usually you can set this up as a default in the printer settings or you may have to go in and select it every time like I did premium photo glossy and a 5 by 8 paper sheet we'll click OK and we'll click print and now the photo will be printed and we'll go to the next step okay after we've selected print we're gonna wanna put our, printer mater our print material into the printer but before we do that step, I wanted to just take a moment just to show you the three uh, materials we're gonna we need that were required to make a custom case. Uh, the first one is what we we're just discussing. This is our print material. This is what you order um, from us. This is what all photos will be. This will go into your inkjet printer. This is where the photo will be printed onto, and then put into the cutter afterwards. Our next material. This is our shield mater material um, that you also order from us. This is what will apply over the white print paper, and this is what protects it from scratches and rubs and gives it a glossy, uh, really uh, nice look to it. Our last is, for obvious, our uh, phone case, our iPhone 7 we're doing today. Uh, this is what the, the picture will apply to to create your final custom case. Okay, so now that we've showed you this, let's take our print paper and put it into our inkjet printer and print out that photo that we just designed. So we have our print paper. We'll insert into our inkjet printer. This is a top loading inkjet printer. These are all the models we recommend. Um, tray printers that you put the paper into the tray uh, don't typically work with this material since this is a thicker special material for custom cases. Uh, now to print out the photo. Okay, as you can see, the picture that we designed in our printing case software has been printed. This is with all the aspect ratios we've adjusted and we've moved uh, to center. The template will not show up like it did in the program. That's what the cutter machine will do for us. So let's move to that next step, um, uh, putting our shield onto this and cutting it out and applying to the phone case. Now we'll be taking our printed photo and we will be inserting into our cutter machine to be cut to the iPhone 7 that we've designed. Laid out here is our mat. This is a sticky mat. The photo applies to here and this is what holds it in place to be able to cut it. Here's our print picture and how we will place this into our cutter is this flat surface down here is what the photo will go against. This is what levels it out. Uh, it keeps it straight. And if you look over here you have a um, a piece that will back the photo to the to the left. So you'll take the photo and you'll push it all the way left to where it stops. It's a stopper here. This piece here where it will not go any further. So flat to the back, all the way to the left. And then you just apply the the photo down. And now it's to the mat. Our next step is we'll be taking our shield that we uh, showed you previously and this is what's going to apply over the photo to protect it from the scratches and give it that glossy look uh, this is pretty simple uh, what you'll do is you'll take your sh our shield material and you'll just get the edges here and it appeals off and there's a adhesive part to the side and it's real simple you just take the shield and you just cover majority of the photo the templates only going to be cutting out in this section but you just cover the whole the whole um, a five by eight sheet, and you just kind of place it on. You know, take a squeegee, and you can just go down or up or however you want to do. And this is just applies it 
gets it in place. And that's how simple it is to apply our shield. Uh, now we'll do our, uh, our next step to cut. Okay, the photo's been placed into the cutter and the shield has been applied. Now we're going to cut. Under the print button that we selected to print the photo, we're now going to select our cut button. If you select cut, another dialog will, box will come up. And what we'll want to do is go to our printer and the printer is simply cutter. So if we select cutter, you won't have to go into properties like you did with the inkjet printer. Uh, you'll just select the cutter and you'll select OK. And the cutting will start. Okay, the photo's now been cut. I want to make a side note. This material is very strong, the glossy shield that we applied. Uh, it's durable to withstand any types of scratches. Uh, it let, lets the photo, that's what makes it last um, for a very long time and creates that glossy look. So what we're going to do is we've done one cut. I always like to run a second cut over it just to get a clean get the blade cut all the way through because it is such a tough material so we will select on our tablet again we'll cut it one more time it doesn't hurt to pass it through okay now we will remove the you can remove the sheet off and unpeel it I just leave it on I peel the edge of the print paper and as you can see you can peel off that's the cut that was made this is what you're left with so after we've designed printed covered our shield and cut we're left with our final material to apply to the phone case so let's move into that next Okay, our last and final step is applying the material design to the phone case. Uh, there's really two options to do this. Our first option, which is on any of them you'll, you'll have to do this, is you'll peel the backing from the uh, finished material. And you could take the phone case and you could simply just insert it in. If you have a steady hand, that's simple to do. And then you just apply it by hand. I personally like to recommend if you're new at this or even a veteran at it, um, this is a solution we offer. This is just a, a little water with some soap. What I like to do is apply it to the back of the material. And you can even apply it to the phone case. You could do it generously if you want. There's no not going to hurt anything. And what this does is it lets you put the photo in without the adhesive sealing up real fast and having the photo a little off or a little tilted because as you can see here we can move it um, it's not permanently uh, stuck yet so this helps just kind of fit the photo and get it right into exactly uh, the sides and fit into our grooved case so I'll just adjust it it looks like it's all fit in there perfectly you can feel the lips on the side it's kind of sunk into the case now and then I would just take my squeegee just to get that excess water out. And that's it. That's how simple it is to apply. Uh, so we've printed, uh, we've designed, printed, applied the shield and cut, and now we applied to the phone case, and now you have a custom case that was made quick, easy, and simple um, into one of our two-in-one phone cases. 
And that is our video uh, to create print a case, custom case in minutes.